you know, it's like one, one of the most extraordinary things in music is the way great composers write uh, introductions to symphonies, concertos, or whatever. And I remember reading something that struck me very, very strong, very strongly when uh, one of the writers on Mozart said that Mozart's sense of when and how to bring in the piano after the exposition of his concertos is simply uncanny. And it's never formulaic, it's never the same. I mean, of course, you have some of them which go and, you know, it just comes almost at the very beginning of the movement. But generally, there is a, a symphonic type uh, introduction of the material, and then the piano comes in with the material that you've heard already or not. You know, uh, I mean, uh, in the C minor, for example, you have um, In any case, the um, you know this was not something calculated because I really don't don't calculate my music. It's, it comes as a surprise to many people when they feel satisfied by the order of events. They feel satisfied by the lengths of sections. They feel satisfied by the trajectory of the music, whether it's moving forward or just st st stayed uh, stayed and static, um, and they wonder, uh, you know, how was that all planned out? And I cannot explain it except in terms of what for me is the ultimate measure of music. How does it feel to perform? How does it feel to actually go through the moves of actually making music itself? And that, I prefer to think of that as a kind of instinct for dramatic truth, dramatic continuity, dramatic contrast. And the tension that's built up in a section at some point can either be intensified or it can be continued or it can be released. And how that happens is not anything I can actually plan. I cannot plan. And I've said over and over again that when I begin a piece of music, I have no idea where it's going to go. And I must say that for a long time I felt this is really, uh, I must be a, a kind of uh, dweeb. Uh, you know, kind of a nebbish because great composers really know. They sketch out, they have the whole piece in mind. You know, you heard this about Mozart, you see it in Bach. Mm -hmm. They really know where it's going, they know how it's going to get there, and it's a totally professional package with some deepening surprises along the way, which keeps it fresh. But what consoled me in much, uh, much long, not in the not so distant past, was the testimonials given by authors who say they very often begin a book with nothing but a character in mind, or a couple of characters, or a situation whose denouement they have no idea about. And they begin to write, and one character comes to life and bounces off the other and requires the entrance of another, of an accident, of a circumstance, of a, then it has to go back to produce the history which led to this and possibly the ancestry and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, I realize that it's not unique, it's not uh, also, it's not necessarily uh, uh, deficient to start with nothing or to start with maybe it's the smallest idea. And very often for me, starting may start with a, a single uh, chord or just, for example, the beginning of the oboe, oboe quartet. It's the idea of a slowly moving ground bass with lines uh, elaborating and, and uh, simply floating above, above that, but floating with a constant local interest of inflection. You know, when we play, when we study Bach, we can do it at any tempo. It could be at the incredible the tempos that Rosalind Turek used to take were like four times slower than any normal human being would ever take, and yet, and yet, the intrinsic weight and tension and inflection of each of the Bach moves was satisfying. And 
you know, very often, you, on the other hand, you get people who write music, and it's a continuity of music, and I can think of composers like Bill Schumann, for example, and the local event is really of very little interest. You get these long lines, and if you really stop the action, you say, oh, hum. And I must say, working on music like that as a performer, and as you know, I, that's really, in many ways, the heart of my, my musical being.